Here's your latest African news. West Africa. French minister heads to Sahel amid talk of Russian security for Mali. France's armed forces minister arrived in Mali on Sunday to pressure the military government to end its talks to bring Russian security forces into the country and push it to keep a promise to return the country to constitutional order. Diplomatic and security sources have reported that Mali's year-old military government is close to recruiting the Russian Wagner Group and France has launched a diplomatic drive to thwart it, saying such an agreement is incompatible with a continued French presence. On Sunday, Mali's foreign minister called for objections from neighbor Niger to the prospect of a deal with Wagner, unacceptable, unfriendly, and condescending. Algeria Algeria's former president, Abdelaziz Bouteflika, dies aged 84. Abdelaziz Bouteflika, who ruled Algeria for two decades before resigning in 2019 amid mass protests, died on Friday. Bouteflika rose to the presidency of Algeria in 1999 as a former French colony emerged from a decade of civil war that nearly killed 200,000 people. Dubbed Boutouf by Algerians, he initially won respect for helping foster peace, notably with an amnesty law that prompted thousands of Islamist fighters to hand in their weapons. Boutoufreka went on to be elected for three more consecutive five-year terms, most recently in 2014. Ethiopia Tigray rebels say they are ready to cooperate with the U.S. to end conflict. Tigray's People's Liberation Front, an armed rebel group which is fighting the Ethiopian National Army and its allied forces in northern Ethiopia, on Saturday said it is ready to cooperate with the U.S. government to end a nearly one-year-long civil war in the Horn of Africa's nation. The group was responding to a new decree signed on Friday by U.S. President Joe Biden which authorizes broad sanctions targeting parties involved in the Tigray conflict. The sanctions will target the Ethiopian government, the Eritrean government, the Amhara Regional Administration, and members of the Tigray People's Liberation Front. According to U.S. officials, the administration will impose the sanctions within weeks, not months, should warring parties fail to bring positive development to the end of the conflict. Guinea Guinea's military government rejects pressure to let Conde leave Guinea. Guinea's military government said on Friday it will not bow to regional pressure and allow President Alpha Conde, detained since his overthrow in September 5th, to leave the country. On Friday, Ivory Coast President Alassane Otara and Ghana's President Nana Akofuadu paid a one-day visit to Conakry to ask coup leader Dombuya, a special forces commander, and for Conde's release. Otara had been hoping to leave Guinea with Conde, but the plan did not bear fruit. The military government said in a statement that the former president is and will remain in Guinea and will not yield to any pressure in a statement read on state TV. Tanzania President Samia promises to support women in development. Tanzania's President Samia Sulu Hassan has promised to continue tackling challenges that make it difficult for women to be involved in leadership and development. President Samia said Tanzania has evolved from talks on not leaving women behind to discuss on development as more women contribute immensely to Tanzania's economy and continue to make great strides as entrepreneurs in other careers. She also urged women to vote for a woman president in Tanzania's next general election. The head of state said she is appointing more women to leadership positions to change the status quo, adding that more women will be appointed in government positions. Nigeria Nigerian tech expert dies in his sleep just days after winning a $125 million US government contract. A Nigerian tech expert, David Bodi Odiabo, has reportedly died in his sleep seven days after winning a $125 million US contract. His brother and CEO of Retina AI Health Incorporation, Mr. Stephen Odiabo, narrated how he died in a post shared on LinkedIn. Stephen said his brother, who was fully vaccinated and did not have COVID-19, had a cardiac arrhythmia or heart attack in his sleep and passed on at the age of 42. He revealed that the death has left them devastated. Before his death, David wrote an algorithm for automatically detecting threats at airports and it won a $125 million contract from the Department of Homeland Security, beating out companies backed by billions of dollars. Somalia Somalia is on the cusp of becoming the world's first cashless society. The Somali Central Bank introduced a central payment system in August which connects the nation's 13 lenders and formalizes digital payments, making payments easier for people across the country with more than two-thirds of all payments in Somalia made via mobile money platforms. The untapped market for new infrastructure, apps, payment systems, and fintech is huge. Over the past decade, Somalia has been working with international financial institutions to implement key economic reforms. The government has passed necessary legal frameworks to create a conducive environment 
environment for businesses and to better facilitate foreign and domestic investment in the country. A burgeoning financial sector will create opportunities for Somalis at home and abroad. Somalia is already a world leader in mobile money use, with over 70% of 13 million population using mobile money services. Thanks for watching. Visit our YouTube channel Tunacheki to watch our daily news reports and our website tunacheki.tv for all the latest news updates. Also, don't forget to catch our new show Startup Africa every Thursday on our channel. You can directly support this new series by becoming our YouTube member or becoming a Patreon. And remember, Africa is watching.